this joke that a girl tells to a guy. I wish I could be your balls. And the guy's like, what? And the girl says, this way we can hang all the time. If you're like 22 and you only go for it guys in their 30s and kind of maybe have that issue. How do you like the sights? I like New York only. <laughs> if I go to any other city, I'm not going to survive because I don't know how to drive. If you can support a girl's lifestyle, any girl can be nonchalant. Oh, let's do rock, paper, scissors, and whoever loses have to choose either truth or dare. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Fuck. Hi. Hey, Jennifer. How are you? Good. How are you? Pretty good. Pretty good. Where about you based? New York. How's the um weather in New York? Uh, it's warming up. Nice. Is it spring already yet or not yet? Yeah, it's spring. Wait, is there no spring where you're at? <laughs> there is spring. We're going into winter. I think it's starting winter. Let me see. Is it autumn or winter in Australia? Winter months in Australia. Okay, winter starts in June. Okay, damn. It's just, it's only the second month of autumn. It's getting pretty cold for autumn. You guys are the opposite? Yeah. What? Yeah. That's a th I'm in Australia. So I think since we're like on the other side of the hemisphere, uh, when you guys are like winter, we're summer. But why does mainstream society portray seasons in the way we do? Don't mm -hmm. you like, like mainstream, I would say mainstream media portrays seasons in the f way that like March, April, May are spring. March, April, May, a uh, spring. Wait, let's go summer. So our winter is June to August. When is your summer? That's definitely not what you're saying, like definitely exists on your hemisphere or something. But that isn't like in media, kind of. Oh. Have you thought of that? I'm pretty surprised. Like if that's how half the world lives, but that is never represented in mainstream media. Huh. As an Australian, um, a lot of like Australians, they, they go to Europe, they go to America during our winter from like June to August. They go, they escape the winter and they go to those, like those, those Northern Hemisphere countries. So that's not a thing in America where like you guys might escape during winter to a different country that's probably gone through summer period. Yes. Oh, wow. Interesting. Is June to August also summer, like our winter? Does it match those exact same months? Does what? Does, does... Uh, let me see the dates again. So our winter is June, June, July, August. June, July, August is our winter. Is June, July, August your summer? June, July, August, yes. Oh, very cool. It's like exactly opposite. Yeah, but you would never hear that. Like, you know, in movies, everyone always refers to these months as summer. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So you're sort of shocked that it's like winter for Australia. Those exact months are winter for Australia. Yeah, I'm No, it's not shocking in and of itself. It's shocking that that's how it's accepted. Like our hemisphere is considered the correct one almost. Huh. You know what I always found weird when I was in America is how you guys would write the dates with the month first. Like that always like was like so confusing where like we'd write 12-03-2019 and I had no idea if that was like the 3rd of May or the 5th of March. Mm. And it was just like generally accepted that um, you guys put the months first, which is so weird because in Australia it's just generally accepted that you put the date first. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much for doing this. I, I really wanted, I think I've been trying to sort of get younger influencers on the podcast. I really like your content. You're like consistently pumping out these sort of cool skits. What, what's your posting schedule at the moment, Jen? I try to post every day if I can. That's crazy. How do you come up with so many ideas? Do you have like a notes filled with ideas that you just come up while walking? throughout? Yes, like that, that's actually what I do. Wait, let me show you my notes. Yeah. I just had a notes today. I just had, like, you can't see it, but hmm. it says argument in which the other person only responds in business speech. Hmm. So that's my, my next idea. And then <laughs> this idea is really funny. <laughs> it's called omakase video equals balls hanging. Okay, let me explain. So basically 
there is there's this joke that a girl t- tells to a guy um i wish i could be your balls and the guy's like what and the girl says this way we can hang all the time or like uh-huh. i can hang with you all the time yeah and yeah. then i saw that joke, i was like okay i'm gonna use that for a skit but i know i'm getting omakase soon so i'll probably do it during omakase so these are my notes it's very spontaneous it's not organized I really like the, I think I recently watched one of your videos where it was like the shoulder ride, where like it was at a rave, a guy would give you a shoulder ride, and all of a sudden he asked for a tip. And I'm like, oh my God, like, I don't know, Australia's usually like five years behind, 10 years behind on what happens in raves and events in America. But like Australia is getting to a point where like, it went from like everyone just giving each other free stuff to like, now like there's paid services. Yeah. Really? Actually? Uh I think like sort of like light shows, like people would charge for light shows now. You know, they'll, they'll give you a light show and they'll be that like, I kind of get. Oh. That I kind of get. That I didn't get at all. Like I was like five years ago, that was just, people would just do it for fun. People enjoy doing it. People would just do it for free. There are still people who do it for free, right? I'm guessing. Yes. Because I feel like if they want to charge, they could, but I also wouldn't say it's common here. Okay. Got it. One thing that um, I was like talking to some, I, I was staying in San Francisco. I had like older friends there. They're probably maybe in the mid thirties now. And they'll tell me how like back in the days when they used to rave, like there was this really lovey sort of like communal food where everyone was just like very nice. Like everyone was sort of really all together at an event. But nowadays it's quite clicky. It's a quite like, it's just a lot of little circles and, and that vibe. Is has gone. Well, what's your thoughts? I still think most people are nice. I mean, I think the plur vibes are still there, but Mm. uh, uh, I noticed in some places not as much. I feel like when I went to Miami, there was a lot of mean people, but it's probably because there's a frat culture associated with it. Mm. That was my. Yeah, what's plur vibes? What does that stand for? That's something. Yeah, plur stands for. Oh, I forgot. Plur vibes. I think that's that's it. We're like. I think we're sort of in Australia, we're slowly getting away from the plur vibes. Like that's starting to lessen a bit. Peace, love, unity, respect. Mm. With your ideas list, like I have a list of ideas as well. And are there like certain ideas that are just harder to implement? So you sort of just like let it sit there for a longer period of time and you keep scrolling past it. And you're like, oh, eventually I'll, I'll do that idea that I really like, but it's like too much effort. And if you're posting every single day, it's like yeah, yeah. you never get to it. I save for like much later, like the ones that require cr- crazy editing. Mm. I, uh, the thought of it just annoys me. Yeah, because like ideally, I'd like to create content like just like highly nice, cool, ed- like the the harder projects. Like ideally, I'd like to upload that every day, but I find myself defaulting to the easier edits, the easier ideas and like maybe once every two or three weeks i'd be like all right let's let's put in some effort and and do this idea that i've been wanting to do i think one day if i'm rich enough i can find a editor who's really good at special effects and just hire that person Mm. what type of special effects stuff do you want to do like cool transitions or something i don't know there's stuff that we could definitely learn right for example the trend where i don't know if you know what i'm talking about but there's like this couple walking and then when they walk they would like change outfits because something would fly over at them and then they would change outfits mid-walk but it's done through editing huh i've seen those fashion videos where they stand in one spot and clothes swoop in from the side or something like that oh yeah yeah exactly that yeah the clothes swoop in that thing and i know we could learn it i know if i just look online there's a million tutorials i just Mm -hmm. don't want to do it So one day when I'm rich, I'm just going to hire someone to do it. Nice. I agree. Yeah. Which, which is your main social platform, Jen? Right now, the one I care about the most is probably Instagram just because it's growing fast Mm -hmm. and then most of my friends are on it. So I, I, you know, (laughs) any tips for IG? Like I've been trying to put in a bit more effort on IG, but like IG reels, it's yeah, I can't. What's your tip? Any advice? Just do, the, just do the hottest TikTok videos. If it's going to do well on TikTok, it typically does well on Instagram. Instagram's like a like a slower version of TikTok. 
Interesting. I think I've been doing it wrong. I've been like scrolling through Instagram reels and finding hot reels to copy. But I, I guess I should be copying TikToks instead. Yeah, well, copying hot Instagram reels also work. You just can't copy them 100%. You just have to come up with an idea that fits that template. For example, if it's a video about, like my video about tipping, right? Mm. It came from another idea of someone else doing a tipping video. But then I was like, okay, let's combine a rave element. And that's why it worked. Mm. I feel like it's always about taking what other people have and just adding more. And do you think doing that by like taking stuff that's doing well on TikTok and adding more to it, do you think that's better than taking good stuff on Instagram Reels and adding more to that? Um, I think as long as it's good content, it's fine. I just do TikTok more because I find Instagram, like I see old stuff on Instagram a lot, like old trends from a while ago. And it just personally bores me, but I'm sure it could work. <laughs> I'm sure from a traffic point of view, it works. Makes sense. As a consumer, like, are you using TikTok or Instagram Reels more? TikTok. For, for watching, TikTok. Huh. How's, um, how about like people in America? Do you feel like TikTok is still the main, is it still the, the top dog? Is, like, that's, is that still the most popular? It depends on what age demographic. I feel like young people, like younger people definitely prefer TikTok, but Instagram's more general appeal. Instagram still, at the end of the day, it's a place for you and your friends to share, right? It's like, okay, let's see what my friends are up to. You don't go on TikTok and look at what your friends are up to. Nobody cares. You're looking at strangers. So mm. TikTok is for looking at strangers, really. Oh, wow. And that would make sense. Like, if I want to grow on Instagram, I need to sort of get good at creating content that attracts strangers. And TikTok's content is, like, perfect for that. Um, yeah. Because oh. I know on um, Instagram, I don't know if, if it's just me, but like I rarely scroll through my home feed of all my friends on Instagram. I just go stories and reels and DMs. Those are the only thing oh. I use on Instagram now. Sometimes... That's definitely a you thing, I think. Hmm? That's definitely a you thing. <laughs> oh, really? How do you use Instagram? I think most people who are not content creators, we're talking about normal people, right? Mm. I think most people still use Instagram as a social platform. Do you scroll through your home feed? Yeah. Oh. And Keep then... up with what all my friends are doing. Interesting. How many people do you follow on Instagram? And do you go through everyone's content or does algorithm Instagram pushes who you like up to the top? They definitely push who I like to the top, yeah. I follow a lot of people. I, I definitely don't see everyone's content. Oh. But then again, I am a special case because I am a content creator. So I end up getting bored of my friend's content real fast, right? Yeah. But my other friends don't because I notice they like each other's pictures very often and kind of see everything. Like, it depends. Yeah, I had like a friend. I was like watching her use Instagram and like she did something that was, comp this is like three, four years ago. I was like, what the hell you use Instagram that way? She would go to the explore feed, scroll down, look for something interesting, click on that. And scroll down from that as it will give you more similar things to that one interesting thing. And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's crazy. Maybe it's a girl thing. Because <laughs> like, yeah, I, I, I sort of get it. But like, I just go straight to reels because that gives you like tailored stuff. Oh, well, that's because for me, at least, I don't always just want to look at video content. So if I want to look at both video and photo content, that's where Discover page takes me. Mm, that's true. I don't consume much photo content. Yeah, a lot of people still like photo content. Because if I want to look at pure videos, I would go to TikTok. Oh, wow. Huh. How long have you been in the social game, Jen? What got you into it? Um, I started this account three years ago, I think. Yeah, three years ago. But at first, it wasn't a content creator account. I just post my pictures for fun. But I think I, I like taking pretty pictures. And then I like posting my pretty pictures without the need for it to go viral. But then something would happen. Like this post would go viral and I would get some followers. And then that pushes you to do more. I, I never decided to be a content creator. I wanted to be a writer back then. Oh, and wow. then um, life took me. And then suddenly everyone's like, 
look, Jen, you have 10K followers. That was when I had 10K. I was this big. I was like, ooh, this is cool. I never thought I could get to 10K. Okay. Then, then you have the expectation, right? People start thinking you're an influencer. Even though you're not really an influencer at 10K, I still maintain that thought. I do not think 10K. But, but back then, people would be like, wow, you're an influencer, you know, what are you going to do next? And then you're like, you're like, shit, okay, now I have to, I have to do this for real. Then you start thinking of content to do. And then you get more and more followers. And then you're in the game without trying to be in the game. I kind of think that's everyone. Because most influencers I know didn't start off trying to be an influencer. It just happens. And the ones who really try to be an influencer end up not being able to be an influencer. That's true. Um, when you hit 10k and you're like, all right, let's give this a try. Were you trying without trying or were you trying, trying? I started to be like, not nearly as trying as now, but I started to be like, hey, let's try to post two to three times a week. So that's still not very much. It's And, and I don't deliberately plan out my content. It's just, okay, today I'm going out to eat. Oh, let's take some pictures here. Maybe I could post it. Not planned. And then, oh, I see this idea. There was no pressure. It's more like if I go out, I'll, I'm just going to make content for fun. But now I have to wake up, think about making content and go to sleep thinking about it. Like if I want to take a break, I will feel guilty. I will know it's not a good idea for me. Yeah, well, good old days. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like your whole day you wake up and it's like, okay, like it's just one real a day. Is that your main focus? Just one... 60 second under 60 second video and if you get that off your plate you can do you have a backlog of videos yes well it depends i'm i'm a very disorganized person i sometimes go out and take a bunch sometimes i have a week where i just lie there and do nothing and i just post fast backlog um and i would save up pictures like pretty pictures just to post in the middle when i don't have any video content i'm like oh shit i forgot to make videos okay let's post a picture <laughs> nice do pictures still work nowadays on Instagram? If you're hot. Nice. <laughs> oh, and, and, the, and the picture quality is high. Actually, just being hot is not enough. Nowadays, it has to be clear. It has to be bright. It has to tell a story. Yeah. Huh. And then do you have like long form caption to tell a story? Oh, no, 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 no. The, the photo tells a story, quote unquote. It, it's not like I tell the story in the caption. It's like, if my background's interesting, like, oh, I'm on a beach or like, I don't know, um, I'm eating expensive food or something. I don't know. But like, it has to have a story. It can't be like a selfie. It can't be like me in front of a white wall. Yeah, makes sense. On your explore feed, like I, I notice on my explore feed, I'm constantly seeing the same creators and influencers. So for example, like in my feed, it's like a lot of Asian creators and like after like eventually like now I just see constant similar faces and now I sort of know like all the Asian creators I guess is that what's your explore feed like are you seeing the same people again and again or yeah that makes sense if you're talking about Asians then yeah because then they keep going viral so then you're, you'll keep seeing their content so that, that kind of makes sense and if you engage with that content people think you, uh, the algorithm thinks you like it so mm. then they push them more to you interesting yeah I think like uh, I went through like, like, um, like a phase, I don't know, like my explore feed was just pushing me a lot of like Asian female creators and it was just all over my explore feed. And I remember, it, it just shows what you like though. It's not yeah, the algorithm, it's, it's you. Yeah, yeah, it's me. <laughs> yeah, it's me. Um, and then I was like at this concert, I was talking to this girl, I was like, oh, I got her IG. And, and then, she, you know, she went to the search bar, but like, she was like, what the fuck? Like she was looking at the explore feed. It was just like all girls. And I was like, uh, um, and it was from the period where I was trying to get like creators on my podcast and I was looking for more f young female creators to like mix up the demographic. So it was like, it was like actually research, but like, she was like, what the fuck? And I was like, uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> it's actually completely normal. So I'm a girl and I'm pretty sure I'm straight, but like my page, my explore page is also all girls. It's just girls. And there's a lot looks, of reason. It looks good, your feed. Your feed looks like wholesome. There's like some food in there. Let's see my feed. Hopefully it's not too bad at the moment. Let's see. That's a lot of thirst traps. I think it's because um, if you follow some creators, even if they're just your friends, 
oh phew my feet is good now it's it's back to normal i think like oh that's actually really normal oh wow you have a really normal page oh thank god dude like i don't know when i asked for that girl's ig it was like all thirst traps and i was like i didn't know what to say i was like uh <laughs> if you have female friends who like to post pretty pictures that's enough for instagram to just flood your page with females mm. it's it's just how it is because they think they don't know if you follow them because you're friends or if you're just a thirsty person. Instagram mm. doesn't do that. If you follow them, they push you girls. <laughs> That's how it is. I have a theory that IG, Instagram knows who you like and like they like who you have crushes on through your stories. Like they push, they somehow know exactly when you log on Instagram, the first stories are usually like people you have crushes on or that you like. And like, if someone's like, if, if you go on your boyfriend's or your or girlfriend's Instagram, you can just see who pops up on their stories first. And that's probably a good indicator on who they're like crushing on. That's a theory I have. Let me know your thoughts. I don't think so. <laughs> looking, mm. I'm looking and I don't think so. I, I often get a lot of people's stories when I just literally don't give a fuck about them. Like, I don't mm. know why your story is here. I just, I don't want to, I don't care about your life. Yes. And I don't know. I think that, again, is your personal experience because I don't know who you have a crush on, but whoever you have a crush on, you probably check their page. And the more you check their page, the more their story comes up first. So that theory makes sense for you, I guess. How about what's this? Like, if, say, a guy or girl is watching your story every single day for like a whole year, what does that like like, does that mean that girl or guy is really interested in me and Instagram just keeps feeding them me and they keep consuming the whole 30 second story, the whole 15 second story and it's a good indicator that they really like me or you think not? Uh, some people are just really bored. Oh. It, it's, could be, it could be that they're interested in me, but it could also be they're just really bored and they're always mindlessly scrolling and they probably don't have a giant friend circle. Hmm. Like, and they're just kind of lonely. That That's also a, a theory. <laughs> I noticed the person I always see the stories of is the girl I hate the most. So oh. the girl I hate the most would always be the first on my stories list. And my theory is that I always check her page to see what she's doing. <laughs> like, oh, what did you do today? Huh, okay. And then Instagram knows. I have people that I know that low-key resent me and low-key like, I don't know, maybe it's like jealousy, ego, it's like all these different things, but they just watch all my stories. I think it's a similar thing to you where like... Yeah, just... yeah, yeah, absolutely. They're probably t talking to their friends right now. They probably share your new picture to their friends and be like, oh my God, look at what he just posted. And then that feeds mm -hmm. engagement and then they get more content from you. Yeah. I had an older friend that had a saying, haters gonna hate but they still a fan. Yeah. Haters are the biggest fans. Yeah. Interesting. Do you do this um, full time now or are you studying? How did you, I know you moved to the States. Tell me about that. Jen. I moved here for college and now I'm going to stay here after college. Yeah. And uh, I, do, you asked if I do this full time, sort of, I work at an ad agency full time. But in the ad agency, my job is to either make videos for other brands or make videos on my account for other brands. So oh. basically, I guess I am doing this full time, which is why I'm pretty free during the day most of the time. Hmm. Yeah. Where did so, you so move yeah. from? When did I move from? Oh, oh where? where? Yeah. Uh, I moved from China when hmm. I was 18. Oh, okay. How long have you been in the States now? Mm, seven and a half years. Nice. How do you like the sites? Um, I think it's a great place to live because um, I guess my friends are here. And then, well, I like New York only. <laughs> <laughs> and I can walk everywhere and see my friends. And if I go to any other city, I'm not going to survive because I don't know how to drive. So instead of saying I like living in the US, I would say I like living in New York specifically. Mm. I was going to say like, your English is like really good. But then I sort of had a quick memory, like I went like a 
friend, she invited me clubbing and she's from China. She's moved to, like, she's studying in Australia and she had, like, all these other Chinese friends that are studying in Australia and sort of, like, I met this just pocket of, like, Chinese sort of international students and, like, all their, their, their English is quite good. Like, their, their English is, like, I don't know how good I haven't, I didn't talk to them that much, but they all have American accents. <laughs> well, you know, we're very smart. <laughs> Did you what is this? Are you? I'm Vietnamese. Oh. Um, Where about in China are you from? Beijing. Beijing. What's Beijing like? Uh, it's like a mixture of New York and LA, I think. You do have to drive places, but you can also take the subway everywhere. There's a lot of people, but then there are there is a mix of residential areas and it's big city. Mm. I don't know. It just feels like a city. Oh. Yeah. Was your English this good before coming to America? Definitely less good. Right now I can speak without thinking. Back then I may have had to think sometimes. Interesting. How about your accent? Like, did you have a similar accent back then? Or has your accent changed over the last seven years? Right now, I would say it's the best it's ever been. I think the more you stay somewhere, your accent becomes westernized fully. Oh. Huh. I think, I think. I don't know. I don't remember. I don't have a video of me back then. <laughs> Do I have a different accent? For, for like... I have a thick AF Australian accent. Oh, my God. Okay. I've been trying to understand you this whole time. <laughs> okay, I couldn't tell. Like I was just speaking, and you were like, like very nonchalant. So I didn't, I couldn't tell if I had an accent. But I'm gonna make it a bit more soft now. I'm gonna soften my uh, Australian accent a bit. I'm gonna try. Hmm? You can do it. You can soften uh, your accent. I don't know how to soften my American accent. It's like, how do you soften that? <laughs> this is um, me trying to soften the Australian accent. Is it softer or does it still sound the same? Same. Oh, okay. No, I'm not going to try that. <laughs> I'm not going to try. It made no difference. Huh. And then do you want to do content creating full time? Is that like the next thing or do you sort of like sort of working remotely and, and doing it on the side? Um, yeah. This is the most fun I'll ever have being a content creator. Unless I can act unless I can start going into acting like Hollywood or something. But then that's that's impossible. And I don't know how. So like <laughs> it's like a dream, but I don't know how to do it. So I'll just keep getting more famous and seeing if one day someone will discover me and be like, ah, I'll give you this role in my movie. And then that'll be my breaking point. That's so funny. Do you have any siblings? Yes, I have a little brother. Oh, do you... um miss your family now that you've like do you plan to do you want to move to like new york and live there for the rest of your life uh do i miss my family i'll see i see them once a year so it's fine i'm sure they're fine like we're adults um i i, I left when i was 18 so it's not like i i remember living like i don't know i think this is normal i think not seeing my parents very often is normal like should we see our parents very often i don't even know yeah. Because all of my friends don't see their family very often either. So I just thought that's the norm. Huh. In Sydney, I grew up in like West Sydney. Sort of it's more of like an ethnic area in Sydney. I'm like surrounded by a lot of like all the guys and girls. They come from like first generation immigrant families. All our parents are sort of blue collar workers. And as a result, there's this pressure on all like the guys and girls, everyone has to be doctors, lawyers, everyone has to really work hard to look after their family. And then recently, like I went to Hong Kong, I've also been recently meeting a different pocket of people of these sort of kids where, like in Hong Kong, like all these girls, like they were just studying everywhere. Like they, like they've been, they studied in the States, they studied in Australia, maybe they studied in UK and like they've They've had all this life experience and like they come from a pretty wealthy family and they really have this nonchalant sort of like vibe where it's like, yeah, things are going to be fine. I want to be a model. If it doesn't work out, then I don't know. I'll see what I'll do. And it's like the complete opposite of like the girls I've grown up in my area where it's like, man, I need to make some money. I've got to look after my parents because, you know, no one's going to look after them. Um, 
yeah and, and you have you fit into that nonchalant very chill like i don't know i'll figure it out vibe Mm. Uh, are you, are you trying to say that, what's your question? It wasn't a question it was just so more of a point i think like what i've noticed is that when it comes to guys like i'd like a guy that is sort of hard working come from the ground up sort of made his own money whereas like if a girl was like that it would It, it's like not attractive for someone. If a girl is like, has some hardship, has some adversity, has to prove something, that is like, like not that attractive in a girl for some reason. I'm just like saying some random things, like no question. You, you think that if a girl is going through hardship and trying to work for herself, it's not as attractive as when a guy does it. Yeah. And I think like girls, like meeting all these like girls that like, they're just more bubbly. There's like, there's this carefreeness to their life. They're like, you know, things are going to be okay. That was so refreshing um, and, and so different. Um, You know, I, I, I think, I don't think it's a guy girl thing. I think it's a you thing. Because you are someone who probably has grown up with a lot of pressure. So you don't like to have a partner who, you know, also is like that. It probably reminds you of your, your home and you don't like that, right? But imagine then you want a carefree partner. But, you know, on the other hand, there are a lot of guys who prefer a girl who is more down to earth. because they feel like, okay, I'm trying to get my shit together. You do that too. If you're all bubbly and not caring all day, like who's going to care? Do I have to care for you? Like, <laughs> so it's, it's more about what, what we were traumatized <laughs> by growing up. So I was traumatized by too much bubbliness. I think, I think my family was so chill that I would prefer a partner that's not so chill. So, yeah. This is sort of like something I'm forming, like the ideal girl. Let me know if this exists. So like, I think my ideal girl would be someone that sort of comes from a wealthy family where sort of money doesn't really phase them. They've had enough life experience where every year they go on different family trips around the world. They've been raised by really good parents where they've been taught respect, sort of being taught how to be down to earth. They've been brought to third world countries so they can see what the other places look like. But at the same time, they still have this sort of nonchalantness about them where their parents look after them. So they've had like, there's, there's no pressure, like things are going to be okay. They can do what they like. They can do what they enjoy. So as a result, there's this sort of like bubbliness. There's this sort of like playfulness where there is no pressure for them to make money, do something they don't enjoy. But then at the same time, they're still humble because they've, they've been, they have all this life experience that their, their family has brought them through. Is that like, does that pocket of girls exist? Is that a thing that, or, or is this like a bit imaginary? That definitely exists, but then no, that type of girl typically also goes for a rich guy. Mm. And then like, what type of rich, like rich family? Like, what if like, I'm just like a self-made rich guy, do I have a chance? Probably, but it depends on, so it, at the end of the day, what you're looking for is actually not wealth, right? It's not like you're trying to leech off the girl's wealth. No. You're trying to look for a girl who I probably has seen things, who's experienced Mm. things, right? That type of girl typically comes from a set of values that's very different than the self-made guy, I think. Mm. Not saying it's impossible. I'm just saying generally, if Mm. I was raised rich and a lot of experience, then I want a guy who's also raised with a lot of experiences because our values are similar. We can go out and chill, you know, we can bring him to a, a fancy place that he would not know what to do. Um, we would buy things that he wouldn't be like, oh, this is expensive. When I'm trying not to be frugal, that person wouldn't be excessively frugal. We share childhood experiences, you know, maybe I liked horse riding and then the guy's like, oh, so I had a horse. It's kind of like that's those little things, the common grounds would be easier to find. in people who've had similar life experience. Now, what if like I've had to pick those things up, like learn golf, learn how to sail, learn how to horse ride, sort of spend time with older peers that's taken me to like nice restaurants and experience sort of fine dining, but sort of not what I grew up with. That's sort of what I've been slowly picking up through life, getting into all these different like 
high-end like Italian brands like Laura Piana, Brunello, Cuccinelli and, and sort of learning about all these things. Do I still have a shot or is it? Yeah, I mean, depends on the girl. I'm sure I'm sure you'll be fine. Um, yeah, d d d depends on the girl. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't speak for all girls and maybe some maybe they have a fetish for a uh, self make guy. Maybe they're like, ooh, I've never seen this before. It's like Aladdin. <laughs> yeah, I've always, I remember watching, have you watched Princess Momonosuke? Mononoke, yes. Mononoke. Um, like, yeah, I, I really like that, that story of like that, that, that Aladdin, that guy that somehow sort of ends up with the princess. Well, I guess it's like a common story, I guess. That, that is a common story. I guess that's a common thing people want, I guess. It's not unique to me, maybe. Yes. Um, and this, oh, it's the first time I've heard this coming from a guy, though. Like, I would like to end up with a wealthy girl. Like, it, it's, it's not very commonly heard. Yeah, and it's a weird thing where it's like, I don't need money, I don't want wealth, but I think that type of girl has that sort of nonchalantness. Like, I, like I have girls that are hardworking, are sort of made from sort of, that they've sort of came from nothing, and it comes with a lot of, I don't know, baggage or like weight, um, but I already have a lot of weight in my life, and I think that's, 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 I don't need more of that, I guess. Yeah. Well, you know, if you can support a girl's lifestyle, any girl can be nonchalant. That's It's true. like when you become rich, every girl will be nonchalant, nonchalant to you. That's true, huh? I had a friend. I remember he, he stayed in mainland China and then he moved to Hong Kong. And he was talking about the differences from girls in mainland versus girls in Hong Kong. Like he, he would go on a few dates of maybe it was just... A, a random pocket of people it doesn't talk for all mainland girls but he was like he would take them out to like nice meals and they'll be like so impressed they would ask how much money he makes like they were very like like he was like how much money do you make what do you do for a living wow this is nice can you buy me this where's the girls in hong kong that that came from wealthy families there was none of that um like they didn't really like care about like asking you for what, what you did for a living or how much money you make were the mainland girls wealthy um maybe they just came from like middle class families okay then that's probably it i feel like if you come from wealth you don't care about wealth but if you didn't then you care about it yeah i think that's sort of what i like find attractive. i think now thinking about like these girls that are like around where i'm like surrounded it's sort of like they really care about money money is needed like they need money to look after themselves look after the family and like that that need is sort of, I guess, not as attractive than like a girl that just doesn't need money and not phased by it. And I think even if I like, hmm? Are you phased by money? Mm, not really, but then I sort of know like, like there are things that like, I remember going to this Michelin star restaurant with um, some older friends and his partner and, and their son and I wanted to pay for the meal because I, I was in Korea and they took me to Korea um, and it was like 1.1k for lunch and like I would, I, like I really wanted to pay they, they ended up taking the credit card and, and not letting me pay but like stuff like that it would be like, oh like that's that's like quite expensive but I'd still probably pay for it so I think I still sort of need money because like there's stuff like that I want it to be more sort of like not hurt I guess I'm just not there financially yet. I think I'm going to get there financially. Like, it's going to happen, but I'm not there yet. Mm, okay. I'm sorry, I actually never asked. Um, I don't actually know what podcast this is. <laughs> I just saw the email and I did it. Like, what is this usually like? So usually, I sort of bring on more older sort of either founders, experts, people in marketing, like I brought on like a kickboxer and they usually talk about what their expertise is in. So like, for example, at the beginning of this conversation, I really wanted to get your thoughts on social media, understand your, like what, what your thoughts are on Instagram. I learned a few nuggets, but usually it's sort of in this setting, I sort of just go off and just talk about random stuff. But if it's someone that has like a wealth of knowledge in marketing, I'll probably spend two hours just talking to them about marketing. Um, well what's your uh what's your podcast called again just search andy my podcast oh oh 
what's called the flip side. I, just going on a podcast without knowing what it is. And I think within this setting, like I've had a other like a few other younger creators, I sort of like spend like probably the first like twenty minutes, get to know a bit of their story, get to know what like ask questions about what they specifically work on, uh-huh. and then I just sort of like spend the next like half an hour just talking about random shit. <laughs> oh, and it's it's in video form too. Oh my god, I'm gonna be on YouTube, guys. Oh my god! Well, I'll be fine. I think I have a lot of really fun clips you can use. I think this was a fun random conversation. I think going into it, I've been getting better at matching people's energy, and you really have this sort of not standoffish, but it's a very like reserved energy. I'm reserved. I'm the least reserved person in the world. It's sort of like your vibe would be like, "Hello, yeah, I'm from America. Yeah, it's summer at the moment." But I think it's sort of, I guess that that's normal. So like,、um, but after like, as we start talking more and more, I guess you got less and less reserved. I don't know. I, I might be.、Oh. Observing、uh, people typically say the the most opposite things. People say like, "I'm too extroverted and too much." Interesting. Maybe because I'm not in person, probably. You're not a person. No, not we're not talking in person. Okay, got it. Yeah, that might be it. No. Do you read? Do I read things?、Hmm. Um, I read social media a lot. Nice. <laughs> I had to read a lot for for school, and I don't I don't read anymore. What type of writing did you want to get into when you were like? You know, I wanted to be a poet. Ah,、oh, so dumb, so so young and dumb. Poet. Were you like reading like T. S. Eliot, sort of like, what what type of? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Any any hobbies that you do? Do you game or anything? Do I do I do what? Any hobbies? Do you game? Do you watch anime? Ah,、uh, yes, I do all of that. I like to dance. I DJ on the side. Um. But most of the time, my hobby is making videos, and then my hobby is my work. And my life is actually pretty boring. People think my life is interesting because every day I'm like, "Look at me going outside," but it's it's just nothing. My hobby is TikTok. That's my number one hobby. Nice, nice, interesting. I'm sort of like out of questions. This was fun. This was a very random conversation. I do like this. This is a very different energy to like the different episodes. So I think I'm just gonna lean into it and be like, like, like I'm not gonna f- like force myself and ask some more questions. But this is a fun, chill convo. Yeah. Yeah, we can just like talk, right? Yeah, I- I'm I'm sort of out of questions, but I think podcasts naturally. I remember I was on this podcast. There was this girl. She's like in North, in, lives in Queensland. She has like a she's in TikTok. She's like a singer, but she also has this like food truck business. And like I was just asking her questions, I was like learning about the food truck, learning about how she grew her socials. And I think sixty minutes sort of flew by. And I was like, so like,、um, I guess I'm out of questions. Do you have any questions for me? And she was like, um, no. I was like, okay, cool. I guess we'll wrap it up. <laughs> that, I was like, that was like that threw me off. I was like, okay, that, that I couldn't. But then I think it's because like it's a podcast setting where like it does feel like an interview type. Setting and I, I set it up in that way.、Yeah. Interviews are fun.、Mm. Um, for people like us, we have a very, very short attention span.、Mm. Very, very. Other people will be like, "What do you mean it's short? It's normal size." <laughs> do you get it? I was making a joke. Okay, so it was a joke. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm laughing. I'm just like trying to like understand it. I'm like,、oh. you get my joke? Sort of ish, but not really. <laughs> Okay, it's like a sex joke. It's like, yep, like oh, look at how small it is. Yeah, and then a guy's like, "That's normal." Oh. Okay. Anyways, so um, yes, we have a very short attention span, right? And then, wh- why we became content creators is probably we find a lot of things boring, so then we do this because it's the most fun. So we're very fun oriented people, and then we we're on short video platforms every day. That's Rotting our brains, so our attention span is even shorter. So me being in a podcast and talking for a long time is already like the limit of my attention span. 
This is like the most I could ever do. So I'm guessing if you talk to someone and they're like, I don't have any questions, it's because they're being pushed to their limit. When I was little, I could just sit there and read a book or do whatever for, for hours and hours on end. And I was very patient. And as an adult, I am so fidgety all the time. Interesting. Now, like, with someone with a short attention span, like, let's say I was like, hey, Jen, I'm going to let you lead the remaining 15 minutes of this conversation. Would you shoot me, like, 20 questions or would you struggle to come up with one? I would prefer to play a game instead. Okay. If, if I had 15 minutes, I would not talk to you about yourself because mm -hmm. I don't know you, honestly. <laughs> and it's like, I think, I, I think, uh, my curiosity is like limit. I'm very, I'm very curious person, but then like it's it's reserved for people I kind of know already, and then I'm curious. Like, okay, you have an impact on my life. Let me know what's going on. I would prefer to end it in a game way. I would be like, well, let's play a game instead. Let's play like truth or dare. You know, let's play some form of game. Or there's this game. Let's play Uno or something. I don't know, but but I'm gonna try to play something because then that's fun. So, huh. it's not a good thing. I'm not saying you should be like this. I think people who are so fun oriented tend to tend to go ups and downs in emotions. Like and this is not great. Yeah, I'm just like social media is bad for people, you know. Yeah, it's crazy. Like I'm just thinking of like what what you said about social media rotting people's brains. Uh, it really is because if you go on a do you know, I forgot the four chemicals, but there's dopamine, right? And there and then there's adrenaline or something. Uh, no, wait, no, adrenaline is not it, whatever. But you, you get your brain accommodated to these dopamine rushes that, from watching a video over and over again. It, watch this on YouTube, this is a real thing. So let's say you start off here, your dopamine levels here. And then you watch videos that, that makes you feel really good. So you get a dopamine rush. When it falls, it's going to fall below the average point. So you're going to end up here. And then you're going to feel even worse, right? You felt worse than how you started. So then you go up and rush again, but then it goes lower. So then you bounce between highs and lows until eventually nothing feels good anymore. So try being in bed watching TikTok videos for a full day. You're going to end up feeling way worse than where you started. That is how dopamine works. And if you work in social media, there's no way you can escape this dopamine. You can't just go away for a week and be like, no social media. No, that's your job. So every day you're oscillating and every day you don't get to reset. What the YouTuber told us to do is every day do some things that make you feel horrible because then your brain balances out by making you feel good. So let's say I wake up with a cold shower and it feels like shit. I'm actually going to feel great like later. <laughs> So every to force yourself or like work out, force yourself to work out and it sucks to work out, but then you feel great later. Mm -hmm. So I've always thought, yeah. What was my original point? My original point was that's why social media is bad for you and you should really not do it. <laughs> Thinking about like what you said about rains broadening and, and being maxed out and how that leads, I guess, people in a similar boat to you to have like really limited attention spans, zero to no interest in like curiosity in other people. Maybe, I don't know, this might not be a fact, but you like, you, you do, you love talking about yourself, love being hit by a lot of questions. And if there's nothing to do, it's just like, let's play a random Uno game. Um, it's all about like, what can maximize dopamine? I think I've been sort of going to a phase where like, I'm like surrounded, like my close friends, we, we just, the, the energy is sort of like this, where it's like more, like I enjoy that that deep discovery and, and learning and sort of having deep, meaningful conversations. Like that feels really fulfilling. And it's crazy that um, the next generation, that might be like not an existent. Yeah. Um, I think it depends on how much energy you have. I like having super deep discussions, but only with my close friends only. Mm. And I consider myself to have really close friends like i'll trust them with my life six people probably mm. that's only six people in this entire world mm. and when you have these friends and then you have a lot of socializing there's no in between it's not like i start being curious about strangers i have no energy 
I'm curious about my close friends and I have to go out and socialize. There's no middle ground. I'm not going to be curious about a stranger anymore. But I'm assuming if I'm not an influencer, I'm going to be curious about people other than my close friends. Because then where is where am all, are all my energy going to be in exploring? And what am I going to explore? People. And I consider that to be a really good thing. However, right now I only have energy for my six close friends. Interesting. Yeah, because like I have probably three or four close friends where like I, I talk to them on a consistent basis and we sort of, you know, I give them that energy you're talking about. But then I do still have that craving to sort of, not craving, but like I remember like I, I often travel and I just always talk to strangers and hear them out. And I remember I was walking by a nearby park and there was this like, for a long time, I kept walking by, there was this homeless person like just sleeping in the park by the public toilet. And like everyone just walked by them, treated them as if they were like invisible. And I was like, you know what, let me go up to them, just say hi and just hear them out. And I was able to hear their story on how they got evicted and how they've been there for four weeks and the council has come and they're trying to get government housing, what they do when it rains so they don't get wet, how they use a tarmac. So I hear them and I was like, oh, cool. And then like, that's a dopamine hit for me. Like that 20 minute random conversation was dopamine hit. And now since I already know their story, I'm probably going to walk by them and not talk to them ever again because like, I'm not going to get another dopamine hit because I already got a gist of what their story is. So I do get dopamine hits from like learning about people. Yeah, you are a type of personality. What MBTI are you? Oh, I recently did it. Let me find it because I don't really understand it. My friend just told me to do it. Maybe you can help break it down for me. Okay, so I'm E N F J dash A. ENFJ, okay. What does that mean? I'm ENFP, so honestly, you're just like a more organized version of me. Oh, because I know I'm more, I'm, I'm definitely more introverted. Like, I'm not an extrovert. Like, I recharge. No, no you're definitely an extrovert. You're really? definitely an extrovert. The fact that you say you get dopamine hit from talking to strangers, that is the most extroverted thing ever. But then I do get tired afterwards. Like, after this conversation, I'm going to be like... But everyone gets tired. I think... I think you're definitely an E, and I think it makes sense you're ENFJ because ENFPs, for example, are marked by creativity and randomness, which is why we like fun, we like social media, we like making content and just being spontaneous and being like wacky and all that. But you seem like, oh, I like learning about people, but not in that way, not in the random ooh, influencer flashy way. So you're, you're like an ENFJ, it makes sense. Yeah, I'm looking at it. I think I'm like 56% extroverted. So I'm pretty like in the middle. I think that's something I, I thought I was one or the other, but actually, yeah, I think I'm probably in between. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. I think that's everything for me. I'm, I'm like drained out of question. Let's let's wrap this up with, with a five minute game. Let's, you can pro let's propose, let's, let's make this full circle. What's a cool five minute game Oh, like let's do play. rock, paper, scissors, and whoever loses have to choose either truth or dare. Okay. Okay. Here you go. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Okay, wait, wait. No, no, no. We have to redo it. Okay, do it on time. Okay, ready, go. Rock. Okay, why are you slower than me? Is this Zoom? Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Does that look okay? Ready? Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Fuck. I'm sure it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. I don't know if that was delayed, but you, you did put your hand out a second later. But okay, let's do, let's do, how would you even do a, tr a dare over Zoom? Let's say you won and you were to dare me something. What would you have dared me to do? Text your ex. Interesting. Okay. I'm going to go with truth for you. Let me think of a okay. truth question. Mm. So I remember I was playing these conversational cards with a friend and the card was like, What's one thing that you haven't shared with anyone else? Nothing. Okay. There's nothing in my life that's happened. I probably shared it with someone. Okay. Then let me, I'll think of a different question then. Mm, let's do a wholesome question. What is something that you feel like you're insecure about? And 2024 is like, you want to sort of work on that insecurity. I feel like I need to lose weight and then I'm going to try to lose weight. Wow, you don't look overweight, though. But, um... Oh, I'm not. 
I'm not. I'm just trying to look skinnier. I feel like I would be so much prettier if I was like super skinny. Interesting. My goal in 2024 is to finally be super skinny. Have you been working out more? Have you been eating less? What's what's been the protocol? But both. Okay. I just have to keep doing it for a while. Okay. Cool. Last two questions I always end up end these podcasts with. One, any recent discoveries that you've implemented to your life? Wait, the weights thing? I put a disclaimer that I'm not encouraging eating disorders or unhealthy body images because like it's just a me personally. I haven't been secure with myself, but I encourage everyone else to not do the same. Okay, disclaimer. Okay, anyways, what was your question again? You're like, I remember I had a friend who he was like 15, 16. I was like, all right, open TikTok. What's the first video about? Like, watch the first video. Okay, watch the second video. Watch the third video. All right, do you remember what the first video was? And he couldn't remember. And it was like, do you want my life? Hmm? That I opened up? Hmm? The first video that I opened up on TikTok in my life? No, just like on that spot. I was like, hey, Aiden, all right, open up the TikTok app now. Oh, oh, oh. What's the first video? Watch the first video. Okay, scroll, watch the second video. All right, go to the next one, watch the third video. And I was like, Aiden, do you remember the first video oh. you watched? literally 30 seconds ago and he couldn't remember it and then that just reminded me because i just asked you a question but i'll re i'll re-ask it um any recent discoveries that you've been implementing to your life i discovered i really like djing and i've been doing it more for work oh how so i just i just dj at clubs sometimes oh wait is this is your work the social media agency or so are you also a club promoter? Is that what you also do? No, no, no. I DJ at clubs. I don't promote. Oh, okay. But um, it's 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 a side side hustle. Mm -hmm. What type of music do you play? EDM, TikTok songs, K-pop. I remember I was I was trying to learn how to DJ. I had an older friend who was teaching me how to DJ, and like this is maybe five years ago, and I was just so bad with music. Like I, I was like always bad with music. I couldn't count the beats. Like it was just like one, two, three, four, one. And I was struggling. Now I sort of got the hang of it, but I couldn't line songs up. I couldn't play the next, it was just like, I was just bad at beat counting. I didn't know when it started, when it ended, but, um, but now I'm getting that. Did you grow up playing instruments? I did. I played the piano and the flute. Yeah, that makes sense. I think rhythm is easy. I think there's definitely hard parts about music. Like making music is hard, I think. But rhythm, I don't think is hard. Yeah. Something weirdly I, I struggled with, like he would be able to listen to a song and would just know instantly when the beat started. Now I sort of can get that intuition. But yeah, it's, it's like there's no formula to it. It's, it's very you know, There are people who would listen to a tune and be like, I know exactly what key it is. You would play a note on the piano and they're like, yeah, you play like la. Crazy. That's crazy. That's actually crazy. But so many people growing up when I went to school, like all the kids who play piano knew how to do it. And I was like, <gasps> they they can hear three sounds, three notes at the same time and know what notes they were. How is that even possible? Yeah. Now I'm just trying to remember, like I remember trying to like, and then beat match, you slow down the 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 BPMs yeah, of yeah, songs yeah. and you beat match and you line it up, you play it, you like, you stack it, you play it a few times before you actually go into it or you like ramp it up. They were, yeah, I learned so much watching. It's such a hard, like, it was like, it, it's so difficult. It's not easy. It's, it's, it's hard to be a good DJ. Hmm. I don't think it's that hard. So I think the hard part is if one day you're good enough to make music, I think that requires a lot of creativity. But I think DJing in and of itself is making your transition smooth, right? It's just going from one song to another song. And he somehow didn't, he would like freestyle and not use any headphones and he would just like find songs and just line it up. And like these, these were old songs that I figured out how to load onto his new laptop. And he was just like playing. He didn't even know what each song was, but somehow it would just like transition into perfect songs with no headphones, not test it. And it would just flow into, I was like, whoa. I'm sure he doesn't know his songs. Cause most DJs, they kind of, if they see a title, they sort of memorize how yeah. the song is. They probably like, he sees a title, but like these are all old songs in like the 2000s, but he probably does have a gist of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Last question, what's your goal in um, 
focus for the next six months besides the the getting skinnier grow on social media uh try to live stream um basically that that is enough to make a lot of things hard <laughs> what type of live streaming do you do what type of live streaming would you want i'm gonna start i'm starting with my agency next month so i'm gonna have to train a lot and then live stream three hours a day Oof. i think staying mentally healthy in the middle is gonna be hard but i'll do it you know, I always manage. There's nothing in life I couldn't do. Is it gaming? Is it Twitch? Like sit at home in front of a, or was it IRL? Uh, it's not like Twitch. I'll just be talking. I'll just be talking and playing games and interacting. No. What games would you be playing? Any idea? Mm, I haven't thought of it. I have to go through training to know what I'm going to do, really. Oh. So the, the agency will tell me what to do. Oh, how do you go through training for streaming? They just tell you what to do. They're like, okay, first lesson. When you go on stream, do this. When you go on stream, don't do that. This this is what you do. And yeah. Okay, cool. Jen, where can people get more of you? Where's the best places um, for them to get more of you? Uh, social media. <laughs> TikTok, Instagram. If you have Chinese social media, Douyin, Xiaohongshu. Um, that's it. I'll link. I'll get my, I'll get my team to link those three things, and then if you have anything else, just let me know. But yeah, thank you so much for doing. This is fun. Like I really enjoyed talking about Instagram. Like I sort of got a, a, a more, a, a bit, a small, like a bigger gist on sort of what it takes, the consistency, the the I, the ways of coming up with topics, and yeah, this is like a fun, chill convo. I learned you look at your crush a lot through your stories. Yeah. It's like, let me think, let me go on my stories now. Let's see who is on my stories now. So maybe it's something I tell myself. Not, yeah, my stories is, it's not really, like it's just friends. Like, let's see, any any crushes here? Like there's people, there's, there's one girl I met that I like on there and everyone else is just sort of like friends. Maybe it's something I tell myself for like why, oh, what's your thoughts if a girl is consistently liking my daily stories. What does that mean? Does that mean anything? Unless she does it to everyone, then she's interested in you. Unless, on in the off chance that she does to everyone, like there's this guy who likes everyone's stories. Like, okay, I know you don't like me, but if she only does it to you, then she definitely likes you. But but how do I know if she's not doing it to everyone else? You guys have mutual friends. Uh, like one, but it's like ask that person. Okay, yeah. All right, that that's a good 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 point. But yeah, this is a fun, chill, different conversation, and I'm I'm pretty excited for this episode because it's a very different energy. But yeah, thank you for taking the. It's gonna be fun this, yeah. when you edit my responses. It's gonna be funny. Yeah, I'll try. I'll, I think my my editor will have fun making the clips from this episode. Yeah, it'll be great. Guys, if you made it this far, hopefully you guys had fun from this episode. Hopefully you guys got some value. Please let me know your thoughts and I'll see you guys next week on another episode. Peace. Bye. Really? I thought it was like really young because I was just asking about like crushes and girls and like... Oh, no, no, no. You were like, so what do people do on TikTok? What's the purpose of TikTok? Okay, but how does the Instagram algorithm work? Like you sound like very boobery. Oh my God, this no. would have been fun for the... This, this, this should have been in the podcast. This is a fun reaction. Um, but I think, um, so like I was talking to my friend, he's the, and he dates sort of girls that are in their sort of like 25, 26, 27 range. And his ex had like a lot of cute friends. But they were all dating way older. Like they were all dating like guys in their like 30s. And I was like, yeah, you got no shot. I was like, oh, fuck, okay. Um, oh, wait, 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 Well, okay, if I'm 25 or I'm 26 and, and I'm dating a 33-year-old, it's actually a very normal age, yeah. Mm. If you think. But I guess if you're, like, 22 and you only go for guys in their 30s, you kind of maybe have daddy issues. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. It's just like a chance thing. Also, I have to go. All right, I'm going to let you go. Okay, but it was fun talking. Likewise. Bye. Bye. Let's stay up to me on Instagram. Okay. Bye.